platypus, animal or demon? (laughs) (laughs) Cute critter or God's failure? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to get smited. Smite. You will be Smote. smited. Smoted? Smited? By the, the, by the mighty smiter. By the mighty Smitesen. smiter himself. He's just going to throw platypuses at me. <laughs> Is it platypuses, plural, or platypus I? Platypi? Platypi? Platypi. Platypi. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> platypus. <laughs> yeah, because that would be platypuses. That's, that's weird, right? Yeah. It just sounds weird. Hello, and welcome to Dependus Belaining, the podcast. I am Jen. I'm Veronica. And we're here again. And guess what? What? It's June. Yay! Does that even mean anything at this point? I know, right? Can you believe it, though? We made it to June. I feel like May flew by completely. Like, April was so long. March was the longest year of my life. For reals in april and then may was just like where to a go blink of an eye where to go yeah. yeah i was like it's gone it's it's done no more may yeah it's crazy so along with june what happens in june every year well we're halfway through the year and mm-hmm. it is pride month yes it is Woo! let's cover that today let's talk about um pride month and what it is so i think every episode we do like every week from now on is going to be something different related to pride month that sounds great yeah yes okay i love it but first let's start off with um ways of ways of reaching us so our platforms as always depend explaining at gmail.com facebook twitter instagram and Jen's phone number will be posted later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, you can also find us on the Mill Cell Muster app, too. Download oh, it yes. now. Thanks, Jen. Thanks for reminding us. All that. Yes. All the goodness. Download it now. Yes. Um. Anyway, so this is a... I, w- I don't want to say controversial because the world is changing so rapidly and things are being accepted more now. So um, it was very controversial back in the day in regards to the military. So let's talk about that for a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some history of things that happened with this, okay? Try to pinpoint where this became a so-called problem, yeah? Yeah, lay it on me. Let's travel back in time. Uh, My sources were Wikipedia for this. So back when George Washington was trying to, to trying to establish the new American army, he recruited a German officer by the name of Frederick Willem von Steuben. I'll just call him Steuben because it's a cool last name. Because uh, no, because that name is like a mouthful. Steuben. Uh, he was um, he was regarded in the German military, but was cast out. Uh, more like he escaped <laughs> when he was accused of homosexuality. It was never proven, and he was still able to collect a congressional pension after the war. That was uh, here in the United States. Well, I'm in the UK, but you, you listener, (laughs) the United States, (laughs) here. Sorry. Um, Steuben developed a close relationship with two other officers during this time that he was, um, so he was helping George Washington with uh, forming this American army. And during that time, he developed these relations with two other officers, and he was suspected that it was uh, an emotional relationship. It was impossible to prove because homosexuality was not a crime in the American army at the time. So there was no need to investigate, and it was all just speculated. It wasn't a crime, but it was frowned upon. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, there was nowhere stating that you can't be... Uh, gay or lesbian and still serve there was nothing saying that so possibly the first case of anti-homosexuality in the military could have been with a lieutenant by the name of another frederick different one but this one we'll just call him enslin 
Enslin. Uh, he was kicked out of the Continental Army on charges of sodomy and perjury. So that could be possibly the first case of it. So fast forward to the 1900s, from like 1910 to 1940, the military discharged homosexuals or individuals who were suspected of homosexual acts. Sodomy was subject to court martial. Uh, the military was expected to conduct itself in a respectful manner and homosexuality was considered immoral. But let's right now, let's acknowledge that these policies have been rooted from religious ideations, right? So the Bible is always very often, very often, I should say, used as a crutch in many situations where people's uncomfortable fe feelings are ignited. So things like homosexuality, contraception, abortion, premarital sex, and divorce. Those are all frowned against because of the Bible. The Bible states this. The Bible says that. The Bible states a lot of stuff that you guys don't follow. You only pick and choose. That's true. You only pick and choose what you want because of things yeah, that make. Yeah, you can't do that. No. So, in the 40s, military branches did not have a set policy that could, like, blanket across all branches um, regarding this topic. Each branch of the military charged personnel that were suspected of homosexual conduct and dishonorably dishonorably discharged them. So mm -hmm. they they did it however they deemed right, and they discharged them. They did, however, go under a rigorous screening when they would when they would come in to join the military, and they were they were looked at how they behaved, how they looked. Yeah, there wasn't like they weren't stating yes, I'm a homosexual because obviously they could lie and say no, I'm not. And they were lying to themselves and they were lying to their country. So they would be screened and they would be looked at if they were if there was any homosexual behavior or whatever that meant in that time. I wonder what they like what like what could possibly give you the idea that they someone is homosexual, you know? Like if they don't openly show anything, like how I wonder like what they like what characteristics they found that were to be quote-unquote homosexual acting I'm, yeah you know well i mean it's probably like the stereotypical things that you see on tv it's like a gay man is going to be flamboyant and uh very very feminine in his behavior is probably what they were looking for um as well as a um a lesbian who they you know would look for being more manly and butch looking it's like okay well that's what you're looking for on the outside then that would deem them homosexual yeah which is just shameful you can't just judge somebody by it the way that they look or the way they act cause right you don't know yeah but different times very different times that we we don't i can't seem to grasp now <laughs> in the times we live now it just seems so crazy anyways yeah um so there was no honorable or dishonorable discharge when this would happen, when this would be the case, when they would find a homosexual serving. There was no honorable or dishonorable discharge. Instead, they were issued what was called a blue discharge. Uh, it was an administrative discharge to homosexual personnel. This caused a lot of issues in the civilian life because a blue discharge was considered negative. So a lot of times they were denied veterans benefits and the GI Bill. This blue charge was also issued to African Americans. So again, not dishonorable, not honorable, but it was still seen as negative. So this was before anything was actually in place. This was just like, we don't like your kind. Here you go. Goodbye. Swift kick in the ass. Good luck. Terrible. Yeah. I found a quote on wallbuilders.com. Uh, concern for the character and morality of military personnel has a strong historical basis. Our founding fathers recognized the importance of pure morals in our free society, and that philosophy extended to our military. I found this and I thought, well, it kind of collapses on itself because it says <laughs> importance of pure morals. Pure morals. But in our free society, how do you claim a free society but then you're you're 
trying to implement pure morals. Like what constitutes as pure morals? You know what I mean? Like if you're claiming pure morals, it's like you have, they're saying you have to act a certain way. You have to behave a certain way. You have to do everything a certain way that we deemed pure morals. But yet they're calling it a free society. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that was like, well, this collapses on itself. I don't like it. It should be removed from wherever. Anyways, that took a direct quote from uh, wallbuilders.com if you guys wish to look at it. So in fast forward again, this was all during like the 40 from 1910 to 19 the 40s during uh, World War II um, and all that. And so fast forward to 1950, then President Harry S. Truman signed in legislation on May 6th creating the UCMJ, which I have talked about. I can't remember what episode, but one of our older episodes um mm -hmm. so the ucmj which is which is a code of conduct in article 125 states any person subject to this chapter who engages in unnatural corporal copulate i'm sorry unnatural carnal copulation with another person of the same or opposite sex or with an animal is guilty of sodomy penetration however slight is sufficient to complete the offense so we've talked about that. This kind of just covers it all. Be like, if you're found having anal sex of any sex or species, you're getting kicked out. How do they, how can you put that in for both? Like, I mean, I, yeah, okay, yes, yeah, so different times back then. But you put the category of humans and animals in together. Like what? Uh, obviously, the animal is not going to consent to this. It's like, how do you have an? Anyways, that's not even. An I, issue. I don't, but like a, a I, I like don't. two consenting adults that are in a relationship or just want to have sex because sex is fun, whatever, and they agree to it. Like, why not? If they want to get freaky and do that, let them do it. I say, let your freak flag fly. Yeah. That's crazy. I that's a thing. I think because we are so. I mean, our our outlook on things now is so different than it was back then. And Again, so, this stems from the Bible because you have yeah. sex to procreate. You cannot procreate if you're having anal sex. Yeah. Right. You can't, and Again. that's understandable. But but no. if some people like it, let them do. It. <laughs> If that's what you like, if you like to, you know, what, what in the butt, but, you know, just, <laughs> it's your choice and nobody can judge you because you don't have to tell anyone. You don't have to tell anyone. And that was one of the things, I think we, we talked about this in, in one of the episodes where, when we covered the UCMJ article 125, it was like, how are they going to know? How are they going to know? I remember Kyle, when he graduated basic training, he's like, we can only have sex in the missionary position. And I thought, how are they going to know what we're doing in our bedroom, in our our own time? We're two consenting adults. We're married. How are they going to know? It's not going to be yeah. written all over my face. Like, look what happened to me last night. <laughs> I know. No, it's like what it was all when you're when you join the military, you're implanted with a video camera so they can keep tabs on you all the time. Yes. Yeah. No, come on. It's invasion of privacy. I can't do that. So yeah. They're not going to straight up just ask you like, hey, so did you do it other than missionary style or did you do it in the butt? It's not like I'm going to. Yeah. Getting kicked out. It's not like I'm going to break down and be like, oh, my gosh. Yes. How did you know? I <laughs> did not have sex in the missionary position. I had oh, sex. I broke the rule. Yeah. I had sex in the shower and I tweaked my neck while doing it. Uh, like come on it happened to a friend of mine i so the only thing i can see it is um you know if they weren't two cons uh consenting adults right that's where the only see i can see it as being a good rule to have in place of uh, not about the anal stuff i'm just saying in general rape. if it's just not rape in general exactly. of any kind just rape if you rape somebody you should have you your genitalia cut off. Yes. In my personal opinion. Yeah, like, oh, I we just finished the Jeffrey Epstein 
Netflix documentary. I can't. I can't bring myself to watch it. It is. It disgusts me every time I see his fucking face. I am. I. I just. I, I was in shock. I was in awe. I didn't know any of the background. Yeah. Of that. I did. Like I didn't know before. I didn't ever. I heard about him, but I didn't know the the full extent to it. Yeah. Holy shit. Like, I just, I'm, my mind's blown. Where was the protection then? Come on, people. You put in these rules about you can't have sex with the same person, same sex as you, but come on. Yeah, but you can stick it any other hole. As long Miners, as they're opposite sex. On. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Come on. Ugh. So yeah. disgusting. Sorry. And um, it's, topic, so, but. it's really unfortunate that they prey on these individuals that are are vulnerable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just not only that they're young and their minds are not fully developed. They have no idea, like, they don't know, like, how to say no to these things. They don't know, like, what kind of consequences they'll get into or lack thereof mm-hmm. because, because these people are intimidating them. And so they don't know. That they can just walk away. They had no idea. Yeah. Stupid. Stupid. It's gross. Gross. Anyways. Anyway, sorry. Going back to Back it. to the good stuff. <laughs> okay, so throughout uh, history, um, from the, from like 1940 to the 90s, to which you're going to cover the Don't Ask, Don't Tell next week. But we had, they there was a lot of instances where... The thing that the one thing that comes to mind to me is years and years and years ago. I watched the movie. I cannot for the name for like I cannot remember what the name of the movie was or who was even in it. But this scene stayed with me since then and it's a scene and if anybody knows what movie I'm talking about, please tell me cuz it's driving me nuts. It's a scene where they're it, they're getting drafted for I believe it's the Vietnam War. So all these young men getting drafted and they're standing in line and one of them like taps the shoulder on the other guy he's like hey do you want to make out so we can get kicked out because we're gay and he's like no (laughs) and that stayed with me as like they they did this this was a thing like and then you had gay service members that were drafted and kept that a secret and they were still able to serve um in in war they with several tours um in the korean war in world war ii in vietnam and um up until the uh the gulf war everything right they were able to serve as long as they kept it secret you couldn't serve as an openly gay service member so that was crazy and it made me think of some notable people and the first one that came to mind was harvey milk who was a uh, politician in san francisco and he was a gay right activist but he served in the united states army during the korean war oh yes yes but he wasn't i don't think anybody knew that he was gay which is to me kind of hard to believe because when he was a politician in san francisco he was openly gay so it's like it, it, it gave the vibe that he wouldn't hide something like that but anyways he was one of them um during the 1970s um there was another one and i don't know if you saw but it popped up on facebook a couple times and i saw it that's why it caught my attention um tech sergeant leonard matlovich who was a tech tech sergeant in the air force yeah Mm -hmm. he was he appeared on time magazine on the cover of time magazine he was the first openly gay man to appear on that magazine in 1974 frank Camney, Camney, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that right, was looking for gay service members who had a perfect record to create a test case and challenge the military. Uh, and so in comes Tech Sergeant Leonard Matlovich. Uh, he was Kenny's, sorry, that's not his name, Camney's, Camney's. <laughs> he was Camney's subject. Uh, Matlovich had a perfect military record, so squeaky clean, nothing wrong high everything was just awesome with this guy outstanding airman now at the time the air force had a ridiculous exception clause when it came to homosexual conduct so if you were caught you were caught acting in their eyes as a homosexual uh this they would call it how can i word this 
this clause, this exception to the clause that they had, this would allow gay service members to continue to serve, claiming that their homosexual behavior was a result of immaturity, drunkenness, or a one-time experiment. <laughs> they called this the queen for the day. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> it made me, it made me laugh. It was like queen, the queen for the day rule. And so that allowed them to, to be able to keep serving and be like, oh, it was a one-time thing. Sorry, I was drunk, got a little handsy. And things got out of hand and I, um, and I participated in a homosexual act, but I am not, I I'm not gay. too far. Yes. I explored a little too far. And then, so then they were asked to sign like a document pledging to never practice homosexuality again in exchange for being allowed to remain in the air force. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Wow. So this happened a lot. And in Mat- Matlovich, Matlovich is, uh, in his case, he didn't agree to this and he was discharged. He wanted to serve as an openly gay man. He wanted to continue to serve his country, but he wanted to be accepted for who he was. So he didn't agree to this and he was discharged. Even though he had served in Vietnam and he had high performance evals, um, he was still ruled unfit for duty because of this. His commander had high regards for him, so he recommended that his discharge be upgraded to honorable because of his impeccable record in 1975. And it was. It was. Um, Matlovich uh, later sued for reinstatement uh, shortly after his discharge, but it went on for so long. There's so much back and forth that and the Air Force had failed to provide like good enough reasons why he couldn't serve. You know, because his record was just perfect. And they're like, other than than him being gay, like everything's perfect. Like, what's the big deal? <laughs> um, <laughs> so then the U.S. district judge ordered him reinstated into the Air Force and promoted. This is what they they ordered. The Air Force instead offered him a financial settlement. And he agreed. Matlovich agreed because he said the Air Force is going to find another way to discharge me. So might as well just take it and have money and keep living as an openly gay man. He had a really hard time um, coming out to his parents. I believe his father, who was also in the Air Force, found out through a news article. So it's not the best way. And, you know, it was like, God, God says this and God says that is what they tried to tell him. But you know what? If God didn't want you to be gay or love the ho- the opposite sex... He wouldn't have given you the ability to love, correct? Am I correct? Because love, everybody has the capability of loving something or someone. Yeah. Yeah. God created you in his image. And according to Lady Gaga, God makes no mistakes. Except for the platypus. (laughs) What the fuck is that? No, Jen. No. Was that with like the duck? The duck build? Are you a duck? Are you a penguin? Are you a beaver? What are you? To Guess me, what? I'm all of it. I'm all of that. I'm all the cuteness in no. one. To me, the platypus <laughs> is like when you build something from Ikea and you have all this shit left over. That's what God <laughs> did. God had all these, <laughs> all these boxes of animals to put together. And he put together all the animals. And he's like, well, I have a duck bill left over. And I have the body <laughs> of a beaver fuck let's just put it together here's some duck feet (laughs) shove them up in there but also you're gonna have you're gonna lay eggs but your babies will crawl (laughs) back in you yes (laughs) god was drunk (laughs) it was god might have been a little drunk when he put all those things together he's like you know what i like these pieces from all these cool animals i'm gonna make one cool animal from all of it yeah. Just one. Just mash it all together. And it's called platypus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The platypus. Yeah. They're so cute when they're little. No. Jen, yeah. they're scary. They're scary. If I saw that in real life and it was like walking towards me, I would <laughs> kick that shit. I would field goal kick it. <laughs> goal! <laughs> Touchdown! Yeah. Knowing the, it probably flies. Who knows? <laughs> Does it? It's like a boomerang. It's gonna come back to you. Yeah, it probably flies. It grows fangs from its bill. 
Who knows? That thing is a it's freak. It's part piranha. Yeah, they've got little sharp teeth in there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> platypus. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> oh, see, I know. It's like God made that too, and so He made everyone for a specific reason. Yes. I, it, I mean, I'm not a very religious person. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not. I'm not for a specific religion but i do believe in a higher power i do believe there is a reason for everything and for everyone and so that's why it's my mind just i don't understand it's because it's something different and we cannot get over different things i mean it's in our (sighs) nature we don't like things that are that change and and get different or are different and we don't understand if we've never seen it before it's like well we don't understand like why are you like this why that's not natural to not like yeah a, a person of your same sex that's not natural yeah. and it's that's, like yeah that's out of your realm it is though it's out like of it's, your realm of when you th- yeah normality yeah, you think of you have to think about it in a different way and like it is though that's just how people are and it's yeah what is meant to be yeah I hate when when there's and I've encountered this a lot since Kyle has been in the military, but like conversations amongst the guys that I hear and it's like putting down a gay man uh, and they don't want him serving or whatever. And it's like if if let's say I'm I'm a lesbian, let's say I'm I'm gay. Right. And I go on and on and I have I make friends and I don't ever disclose that I'm that I'm, you know, a homosexual. But then as soon as they find out and then they turn their back on me, I was like, well, what was it about me that did that? Because before we were just fine. Like, how how is my sexuality skin off your back? I don't understand that. It's like I'm it's not like I'm it's a it's contagious and it's a disease because it's not. It's neither of those. So I don't I don't understand it. I know people I that's what I don't get. Like, yes, it's it's different. And sure, like me i've not been around a whole lot of um gay and lesbian so i'm gonna be a little like different it doesn't put me off i have nothing against him i i like everyone everyone's great as long as you're nice yeah there's no problems your person and that's all that matters is your person and so exactly i might have more questions because i you know i have not been friends with somebody before so i don't know like well, I don't know. Is there something else? No, probably not. I think everybody is the same. I know. So don't hate on me. I promise. I love everyone. Oh. I just, you know, I'm, it's like some people, you just have to have a little bit more of an open mind about this stuff and be accepting. Right. And that's hard for people. It is hard for people, especially, like I said, for um, people that are very dedicated to their religion. And that's fine if you want to be dedicated to your religion. But religion also um, expects you to be accepting of things, except right. that those things that you cannot change and you cannot change a people's a person's sexual orientation. So right. why put them down and why condemn them to hell? Like, no, that's not how this is supposed to go. Love thy neighbor no matter what. Right. No matter what. Mm-hmm. Unless yeah. you're a platypus. Oh, my God. <laughs> Love your platypuses too, because you know what? They're sweet creatures. Okay, <laughs> they're nice. They don't do no harm. They no, love I'm... everyone too. They do harm <laughs> to my eyes, Jen, and to my <laughs> mentality. What is it? Are you an amphibian? Are you a um... make up your mind? Are you a mammal? Are you a reptile? Are you a marsupial? What are you? Yeah. Why do you look the way you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh (laughs) um anyways but but yeah i mean it's true it's it i think that's the biggest thing is people just have a hard time with something that's different and something that's new that they're not used to Mm -hmm. and some people can't handle it they don't like to have change at all and they think yeah they just think it's completely wrong and you can't change their mind Mm -hmm. which is unfortunate i mean that just means you have a very closed-minded minded attitude and you need to stop it right now that and that's fine if you're not willing to change you can't change someone like you said you can't change no you can't because you can't argue with crazy okay i keep no no you can't yeah i keep pleading my case you can't argue with crazy (laughs) 
Yeah. That is Veronica's mantra. You can't, <laughs> <laughs> you can't argue with crazy. But <laughs> you can accept it and move on. And right. just let live. Let live. Let people live. Don't go out of your way to condemn. Like, no. Like, why would you do that? It's just not right. It, that's know. fine you don't have to accept me accept me if i'm if i'm gay like that's fine that's fine we don't have to be friends i don't want your stupid face anyways but <laughs> <laughs> but just let me live right exactly that's what i feel like exactly is the case. that's the thing is that nobody is doing any harm and that you know you're just because somebody loves somebody of the same sex doesn't mean that it's they're doing anything wrong. They're not harming anything. They're no. not, you know, they're, there's no, there's nothing wrong. No. You know, they're not doing anything wrong. So why, you know, why bother letting it ruin, like, rule your life? Like, why right. does it have to be so such a focus in your life, you know? Right, right. And that, you know, they are just like us straight folks, you know, they love and they wish to be in a committed relationship. And what's wrong with that? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Exactly. There's nothing wrong with it. That's the thing. There isn't anything at all. And I just hope that one day, you know, we can get to a point where, of acceptance it's, for everything. Yeah, everything is yeah. just so much more normalized. Yes, it, I think uh, we, I feel like we're kind of we're we're on the right path. It is crazy out there, Jen. Yeah, yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it is. It is, and um, it's really unfortunate, and it it hurts my soul. It hurts my soul too. Um, I don't want to get off too much off the topic for pride month because they deserve a lot of recognition um Mm -hmm. but yeah everything that's happening out right now and i am just keeping to myself and i don't know if that's bad or good but i choose to stay to myself because i feel like i can silently support in a different way yeah versus i don't know i don't know i i was talking to kai about this last night or yesterday and she yeah, we were talking about it and she said we talked about how to bring it up to the children and I said I don't feel the need to bring it up to my children first of all my children are young they're they're seven and five I was like I don't want to bring it up to them because they know that different colors exist they see it with their own eyes but if I say this is the injustice that's happening in the world these are these are this is the ugliness that's occurring right now am I planting a seed of negativity mm-hmm. in them, right? And it's like right now, and this is what I told her, I was like, right now I'd rather let them be be blissfully ignorant and they love anybody, all of their friends, no matter what shade they are. So it's like, I don't want to, eventually we will have to have that topic of discussion, but it, to me that'll be later on in the down the road, many, many years from now. Um, but they're not going to encounter that negativity from us. And I don't want to plant that seed because then they're going to be like, oh, well, so-and-so is different. Why are they different than me? Uh, and, and them thinking something bad versus now when they're like, we point out how my daughter is super light colored and then my son and I are a little bit more dark. And, and then my husband who has jellyfish like see-through skin and so we, we talk about that all the time. And it's like, there's different shades. And I've told them, I was like, if everybody was the same color, this would be such a boring world. It would, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same thing yeah. for your sexuality. It would be a very yeah. boring world. <laughs> yeah. It would. It really would. I mean, the, you don't want to be the same as everyone. You know, I, I'm I'm glad everyone has their own opinions and their own ways of thinking and their own ways of doing stuff and you know their own ways of loving people and whatnot too it's like it's what makes everyone so unique because we're all different right and i just wish people would see that in every single person it's like it's okay for people to be different and there's no reason to ever make somebody feel bad or hate somebody because of how they are how they look and it's just yeah uh, yeah it's it's yeah it's hard it's really hard especially what's going on it's 
It's a lot. Yeah. To me, it's like you're not harming anybody physically or mentally. You're not in, You're not doing anything bad. It's like why deny yourself the ability to be yourself? Yeah. Or somebody else. Let them be themselves. Yes, Jen. Those are the facts of life. Well, that was really good. I loved your history on what it was like back yeah. then. Uh, and I'm, I mean, I'm also not surprised because everybody had very weird, well, to me, weird views back then. There was very closed-minded views. So I'm not too surprised. That, and just sad, saddening to hear about them. They literally, if they found you guilty of homosexuality they could discharge you for that like just yeah it's so sad yeah it was very sad especially when you had you men and women that were so willing to to serve their country and give their life for their country you know patriotic as fuck and then they can't because of their sexual orientation just because of that it's like well you're not hurting anybody you're not hurting anybody by loving whoever the fuck you want No, you are not. And you are allowed to do whatever you want. This is America's a free country. And you can have sex however you want as long as you are two consenting adults. Yes. Adults. Yes. No minors. And they both have to be consenting. Come on now, people. Yeah. Yes, Jen. I, for one, am a supporter. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, there's... uh, like I said, they're they're people just like everybody else. So just the way the, their sexual preference is no bit of my business, and it shouldn't yeah. be the business of the military at all. No, nope. it doesn't affect your your work. performance. It doesn't yeah. affect yeah, it doesn't affect anything. So obviously, if they have other issues going on, um, right? Yeah, that makes sense to you know look into it more. But just because of you know what they their sexual preference it should not matter yeah at all Mm -hmm. yep sad it is very sad but yeah it's good but it's getting better things are getting i think so better i think so and i think the generation that you know our young millennials right now are definitely making a move for the better in situations like this um, but hate is bred at home, unfortunately. Yeah. It is. It is. But you have a lot of people now that are so open-minded and so accepting of the changing world, and it's for the better. Mm-hmm. It's for the better. It is. And, um, yeah, it it gets better. Some of it sucks along the way, but that's how we learn, too. I mean, that's why it's history. We have to learn from the past and things that happen so Mm -hmm. things have to happen in order for us to learn from them yes which is good sucks it's also crappy but like next week we'll learn about the don't ask don't tell oh that's how that interesting one impacted yeah that how that gets going with everything yeah a somewhat of a step forward somewhat (laughs) somewhat yes yes exactly but there are plenty of support groups out there related to gays in the military supporting the, the cause. Because we are 100% supportive of you. Most definitely. Most definitely. You let me be me, I'm going to let you be you. Yes, you guys, you get this whole month dedicated to pride and all that it, you know, all that it entails and all the struggles you've had to go through. And yes. Uh, you know the the wins that you've gotten as well so we're excited to celebrate i wish it was under a little bit better circumstances with what's going on in the states but nonetheless you guys deserve nothing but celebration and support and love absolutely that's a great way of putting it jen they deserve celebration yes yeah all the time i mean you get a whole month dedicated which is great but you just you deserve it all the time, so. I don't have a whole you. month to dedicate for myself. Wait, no, we do. We have, like, Hispanic Heritage Month, right? I think so. Yeah. I don't know I when it so. is. <laughs> That's how good of a Mexican I am. I don't even know what it is. 
every we'll day it. is Mexican day at home. <laughs> celebrate yes. it every day. <laughs> it is in your house. <laughs> I was tra- we were trying to teach my son right now. Um, he was writing his English project down and he was like, how do you spell wood? Like, I would love to do this or wood. And I was like, oh, well, let's sound it out. And so my husband was trying to help him. So I was like, see, the English language is so difficult because you have a bunch of letters in there that you don't pronounce. I was like, this is why I like the Spanish language. Everything is written and pronounced phonetically. And he's like, yeah, but there are a bunch of made up sentences. I was like, that's not even a thing with you right now. Well, I don't even know what that means, Kyle. You shut your face. You stop your, (laughs) you shut your stupid white face. (laughs) Yeah, Kyle. Yeah, so it's a struggle every day here. My my heritage versus his heritage. Guess what? Mm-hmm. Mine wins every time. <laughs> uh, duh, yours is way better, I yes. have to say. Yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Jen, what you got going on in your life right now? I haven't talked to you in uh, a couple of weeks. I know, right? I don't even know. Like these weeks are flying by. Yes, it's insane. We're counting down the days now. We're what, uh, like three weeks away from moving out of the house. Yeah, and like four and a half weeks away of flying out of here. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. Yeah, I like my days are just. Occupied with school, which I'm so over virtual school. Like, I'm also just, I'm at my limits. And so we've been Mm. half day in it. We do all the stuff in the morning and get them to do, you know, maths every day. And then they do either a topic or English project of sorts or workbooks. And then they do their Spanish lesson and then they read and that's it. We're mm-hmm. done for the day. I, cause I'm just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm mentally checked out. I have so many other things on my mind that I just, I need one less thing, but I want you guys to still stay educated. Right. Yeah. No, I feel the same way. I'm just like, I'm so over this. I don't want to teach you anything. The little one doesn't listen. She likes mm-hmm. to, like, create distractions, and so we have to, you know, pay attention to her, and then I have to stop what I'm doing with my son in order to give her attention, and yet her attention is like, let's talk about unicorns, and be like, let's talk about phonics, and she's like, let's talk about unicorns. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> it's really frustrating. She gets to go to yeah. school on, next week she starts school again, here they're, like I said, previous episode they're phasing them in phasing them in back to the uk schools and she will be one of them and i think it's for the best in my case because she doesn't listen to me and (laughs) i need to give them both the attention that they they deserve it's like okay well i want to concentrate on my son who does listen to me when i try to give him a lesson and then when she comes home i can give her attention as well and i want to hear about her day in school and all that so it's been really hard just I'm not a teacher. I'm their mother. Yeah. It, it's a lot. It's it's just, it's been a lot. And it was okay in the beginning. I, you know, I it still is okay. It I was just never have, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm burnt out. I'm so, I'm just, there's so many other things. I want to just hang out outside. Yeah. You know, I'm forcibly stuck at home because we only have one car. And Dave's going back to work, you know, more and I also, I'm also enjoying him at work, though, because then I get a little freedom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, which is, you know, everybody needs for I just need full freedom, though. I need these kids to go live with Grammy for, you know, a couple months. Yeah. That would be, that would be ideal. <laughs> I would miss him. I miss him all the time. I love him to death. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, um, my brain, my introverted brain needs a break. And then I also want friends, though, too. I am I want to be alone, but I want to be with friends. I just, you know, I'm a mess. No, I, it's understandable. You want something that, that's not in your routine right now because it's like you're the only people that I'm seeing right now all the time. Yeah. I can't have – Yeah. I can't complain about you to you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you need a change of pace. That's understandable. I get it. I feel the same way. I – 
I get to, I mean, Kyle is home for three days straight and then goes to work for one day and so on and so on. And so I get to have him for three days at home and we chit chat as much as we can. And this morning he came, he came home and like his phone was nonstop. And I said, can you take the day off tomorrow? Like legit, because it is his day off tomorrow. But I'm like, like mm-hmm. legit, take your day off. Stay home. And he's like, I can try. I was like, oh my gosh, you can try. It's like, I want to talk to you. All I see is children. All I do is fetch snacks. All I do is do laundry. Yeah. Yeah. Laundry. Yeah. And dinner and lunch. And it's like, we look at our budget and it's like, how the heck did we spend so much on grocery oh, Because everybody's eating at home. I know. Yeah. That's a problem. You and guys need to stop snacks. eating. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's like, wow, we really need to adjust this, uh, our uh, spending of groceries. And I was like, yeah. It's because you want to eat all the time. Sew so. your mouth shut so you don't eat. And then you complain, like, well, there's no, do we not have any snacks in the, <laughs> in the cabinet? Like, no, we don't because you ate them all. Yeah. And I can't go grocery shopping because I don't have a car. Oh, Jen. So there. Oh, poor Jen. I don't, I don't care. You know what? I have been able to walk to the local grocery store, which is really nice. Yeah. It's kind of a bit of a walk. It's like 20 minutes, but... I have been doing that a few times a week, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, it does give me a little break by myself. Mm-hmm. Even though Dave's like, do you want to drive? And I'm like, no, I don't want to drive myself. And I hate that fucking roundabout over there. Cause <laughs> no way. And so he's like, but you're going to carry everything home. I'm like, you're damn right. I'm going to walk and I'm going to carry all of that shit home. If I get a break, I'm taking it. You need a, you need a wagon to pull your groceries. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. The wagon would be helpful, but it's all right. You know what? I got my arms. I got my backpack. And I'm, I don't buy a lot. (laughs) (laughs) I know I went the other day and I was like, I just, I just need milk. And then I started wandering the, the aisles and I was like, I don't want to go home. And I was Mm -hmm. just wandering the aisles and I will purposely go at a time where I need to hurry so I can go home because I know myself and I'm like, if I don't have anything else to do, I'm just going to wander the aisles. And mm-hmm. so I set myself up for for failure either way. So I know. But I, I went and I was like, I just got milk and then I wandered. and I was like, I need to go home. Like, I need to start dinner because the best time to go to the grocery store right now is around like three, four o'clock. There's no one there. There's like no one there. Yeah. Don't go at 12 yeah. o'clock. The, the queue is like around the parking, the parking lot. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I've gone a few times and yeah, it's been around, uh, yeah, like four, four or five o'clock and it's been pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, very minimal waiting. I've, I'm waiting for maybe like two minutes if, if I wait at all. So it's nice. Um, but yeah, like I came home one of the days and my husband was like, He's like, oh, he's like, yeah, it took you a little while. And I was like, no, it took me 20 minutes to walk there. And then it took me uh, 20 minutes or so to shop. And then it took me 20 minutes to walk back. So, no, it's normal. Mm -hmm. I was back in an hour. I'm like, come on now. (laughs) That's so crazy. We got to miss each other sometimes. Okay, Dave, we got to miss each other. (laughs) Yes, I agree. You have to miss each other. (laughs) Um, I've been working out every day, like every day. And yesterday I did, um, deadlifts and I don't have any weight. So I did them with, uh, resistance bands and I was like, I can do it. I just have to control my weight back down because I don't have any resistance on the way down. But coming up Mm -hmm. is when you really clench those butt cheeks. Holy hell. Yes. I must have overcompensated on my right one because my right one hurts really bad. Yeah, yes. I'm sore. I'm in a lot of pain <laughs> in my booty. Good. In my booty region. <laughs> Good. Yeah. But I love deadlifts. Me too. I love them. Yeah, me too. So I've been doing that. And then uh, I'm such an idiot. I started keto again because it's the only thing that works for me if I don't eat carbs and I feel so much better. And mm-hmm. it was like last week. What was it? Like a, like Friday, Friday, Saturday, Monday. I had so much energy, so much energy. And I was like, boom, 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 doing stuff. Like I, 
I was working out without pre-workout, which I have not done in a long time. I always need a boost of something. And no, I didn't even need it. And I was working out and I was like, oh, I feel great. Like, yes, this is this is going good. And then um, Tuesday, I was like, I'm, I'm feeling a little tired. And then when was it? yesterday, yesterday, Thursday, I was like drained. I did not feel good. And I cut the kids school short and I said, I need to lay down. I'm not feeling good. And so apparently that's the keto flu where you're just like mm-hmm. you hit a wall and it's like you can't even get up. And that's how I felt. I was like, I was so tired. And I just didn't feel good all around. So, but it's working. It's working because I put on my blue dress that I hadn't been able to button up and it was perfect. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm proud it's of a little wins. Yeah, it's a little yes. win. And I'm very proud of myself for having this much uh, willpower <laughs> to not eat right. bread because that's hard. And sugar. That is hard, it's, especially when you're home. I mean, it's so hard to just not dive into the bad things. Yes, into baking two dozen chocolate chip cookies and then eating half of them in one sitting. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh, this sounds good. It was really hard when I was baking cookies for my for my daughter's little birthday parade, and I made cookies, and I was like, they're so cute. They look like donuts, and I was like, oh, I just want to bite into one, but nope, I resisted. They told me they were good. <laughs> they told me good. they were good. So. Good. That would be hard. I don't know that I could, I don't know that I could hold back like that. You can. You can do it. It's, it's willpower. Find it within you. Deep down. It's really, de- it's really deep down i don't know where it is right now it's just buried reach far. in there as far as you can pull it out just real get in there with your hand pull it out really get down in <laughs> that yeah. i'll try maybe um i can hear a bird outside my window right now and they've been waking me up at three thirty when it starts getting yeah. light out yeah and i'm like can you hear that bird because I yeah. can hear it, and it sounds like it wants to die at the yeah. hands of a BB gun right now. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's a bird or it's my daughter waking me up, and I can't take it's, it anymore. It's terrible. Yeah. Why? Why must it be like this? I hate birds, first of all. I hate birds. I don't, I don't hurt them. Like, I don't go out of my way to hurt them. I just don't like them. I, they're just too loud they're so loud and the obnoxious obnoxious <laughs> no, no, like pigeons why why do you feel the need to swoop at my head right it's because yeah. they're so fat they just can't hold themselves up for very long that's why jen when you get to your next base i'm pretty sure i've told you this there's these weird blackbirds that swoop at your head Great. if you're walking or running yeah i saw it a lot great have fun with that that's yeah. just going to be great. Everything is going to want to dive at me or hurt me in some way, I feel like. In some way. Great. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. That's okay. It's a change, and I'm I'm up for it. I'm up for it's the challenge. It's a new adventure. Yes. Yes. Bird dodging. Yes. It's a new sport. Bird dodging. <laughs> I'm, I'll um, Instagram live um, so everyone can watch, yeah, the new sport happening of bird dodging. And, They're scary. Um, they can, everyone can partake and say, you know, they'd be like, hey, watch out for that bird over there. And like, yeah, I got that one. Two points. <laughs> you see, you see me duck under that? That was backwards. That's five points. Yeah. Did you see my backflip? <laughs> I, I roundhouse that bird. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Um, anyways. Anyways, I don't have anything going on. And we're just no. we're just waiting and waiting and waiting and anticipating whether we're going to get an awesome assignment from this list or have to wait till the next list. Ah. Uh, yeah. It's the anxious waiting. My fellow dependa, you know the struggle. Yeah. I don't I'm here for I, it. Yeah. I'm just waiting, waiting. Very anxious. Always waiting. Always That's waiting. what we do. We're always waiting. We're forever waiting. <laughs> this is the waiting game. It is. Yeah. It is the waiting game of military life. Of the dependa life. 
What did you do as a dependa? I waited. For what? Just waited <laughs> in general. I waited for more waiting and then continued to wait some more on top yeah. of waiting. Within on top waiting. of waiting. And then when I was not waiting, I was actually waiting for that. And then yeah, waiting on something else as well. And Waiting for this moment waiting. where I continue to wait. Continuing to wait. The moment came and then I had to wait some more. <laughs> for reals. <laughs> and then you had to hurry the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You have to wait. You have to patience and wait. And then you have to hurry the fuck up right now. It's time yeah. to go. And then guess what's next? <laughs> more waiting. More waiting. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I'm just filling in the time right now with words. I know. That's, <laughs> we're, that's what we're best at, right? That's just what we do. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Well, okay. Well, that was really good information, Veronica. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of fun researching it. I mean, it was really depressing at times reading some of this stuff, but it was uh, very interesting and very eye-opening. Yeah. So, yeah, that was cool. I can't wait to hear your episode next week on Don't Ask, Don't Tell, because yes. you know you know what? Bill Clinton. Uh, mm -hmm. Bill Clinton. Oh, Bill Clinton. Mm. Mm -hmm. Don't watch that Jeffrey Epstein no. documentary then if no. you like Bill Clinton. Don't tell me so. <laughs> Don't tell me so. I mean, it doesn't put him in a terrible light, but he just does. Yeah, he's you know, it's just me. Oh, nah. but he's so sexy. Mm. Yeah. No, you think that after the after that show. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Anyways. Well, yeah, that's it, Jen. That's all I had for today. That was great. Yeah. Wonderful information, Veronica. Thank you. Yeah. It's a good dose of history today. Yes. I'm all about history. Yes. We all need it in our lives to fully understand how to make the future better. Yes, because it tends to repeat itself. It does. Yeah. Yeah. But if we're it, armed it with the proper tools, we can help it out. Mm -hmm. We can direct it in the right direction. Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. This has been another episode of Dependus Planning. I am Veronica. And I am Jen. <laughs> Jen, tell us where they can reach us if they have any questions, concerns, or complaints. You can do all that at dependusplaining at gmail.com. <laughs> I smelled my armpit. It's cause I started using natural deodorant again. I'm just making sure I'm not stoinking up the place. Sorry. I'm so proud of you. I'm really Thanks. mad that I ran out of my natural deodorant so i switched back to regular and i was really upset with myself. i found i found one at the bx that has magnesium instead of just baking soda because that won't burn my skin yeah um, but i'm only on my second day of using it it's like mr teals or something it smells really good so far mr. so good teals. we'll see okay i'll have to look for that um yes. you can also find us on instagram facebook and <laughs> the twitter <laughs> the twitter we're also on youtube too you can find our episodes on youtube just our audio not our faces yeah you will never know what we look like no because you know our picture's not anywhere for sure <laughs> i have a i have a duck bill you can you never know because we are <laughs> hidden behind those glasses yeah so we, we don't have no have idea a, yeah we don't have a mouth we just have a microphone yeah. attached to our face yeah <laughs> Exactly. I'm looking at myself right now, and that's you can't see what my mouth looks like. You can't even yeah. see my nose. Yeah. Nope. All right, Jen. Well, this was a great episode. Very insightful. Um, I can't wait for next week's episode. Yes. Uh, once again, if you would like to reach us, um, go ahead and email us at dependusplaining at gmail.com or send us a Facebook message or leave us a comment on Facebook. We love that. Uh, Twitter and instagram any of those platforms would be great and if you are sharing even better if you are rating even better mm -hmm. so if you're sharing and then your elderly mother messages you and asks you what it is and then the the her friends message you and ask you what it is and they ask you what radio station is at <laughs> just ignore them <laughs> the dependent plane and radio station, yeah. duh. Yeah, are you on the radio? 
<laughs> no, we're on the intranet. What's the internet? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, it's so sweet. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right. So that's all I have. Hope that's you guys it. enjoyed this episode. Please rate us. Yes. Please rate and and uh, share with your friends, with your fellow dependas. Yes. We love seeing our stuff around or getting great feedback from y'all saying how helpful we've been cuz that's what we're here for. We're here did for you say help. Did you say y'all? Y'all. Did have you ever y'all. I don't think I've ever heard you say y'all. Hey y'all. <laughs> I don't know. It just comes out every now and then. It's just, I don't know. I don't know where to get. I don't don't know where the button rains come from. I'll tell you what. I'm baffled right now. I'm baffled by y'all. It it just comes out naturally. Yeah. That's your y'all is my saying of hella. Yeah. It was hella fun with this episode today. It was. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all. All right, Jen. All right. Once again, thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, we will see you next week. And please support your uh, LGBTQ community. Be nice. Be friendly. Because wherever you go, there There you are. are.